uh, in setting up Cascade three years ago, I'll be up live. Um, <laughs> see everyone. Um, I, it's it's uh, for me um, as the CEO. It's it, I regard it internally. We often talk about the the roller coaster, so I have called it the entrepreneurial roller coaster, and I'll come. I'll cover a few different aspects. Some of which Emily's also covered. Um, oh, I'm sorry. But uh, that's fine. That's fine. That's good. It's a fun thing. So, um, so I'm an accountant. Um, uh, qualified uh, 2002, um, worked with a large accountancy firm until 2009 when I went out on my own as a, a consultant. So I've been doing management consultancy um, since 2009 through my own business. Took on some staff, but that was my core in terms of uh, I knew exactly what I was doing there um, and, and going and delivering part time finance director services. Um, spot an opportunity for a tech startup, um, Cascade which in essence takes uh, management information um, that businesses and, and SME sector are hiring me to go in and help them understand their business analytics, their business information, um, and actually KPIs and understanding what's going on in the business. Um, I was probably spending, I looked at our clients, I was probably spending about 80% of the day uh, tinkering, sorting out spreadsheets, getting it to a state where it was, you know, I could hand it over to them, and probably only about 20, 20%, 25% of the time actually analysing it and understanding it and interpreting it, which is the wrong way around, in my opinion. Um, so, uh, looking at systems that small businesses use, we have developed um, Cascade, which is a business intelligence platform which connects to the most popular software that these small, uh, medium sized companies use. Cloud based, gives them the information instantly, straight out of the box. Um, four or five minutes to set it up and, and away they go. That's that. Cool. So, um, that's not that, by the way. Um, so, the highs and lows. Um, and, and running through, this is where there's, there's a few sort of common themes here. But um, one of the things, it, the old sort of adage about failing to plan and plan to fail. Um, but plan, challenge, and constantly reassess what you're doing. Um, and, and stand back and, and think. It's very easy to, to get on that roller coaster and just keep going. Uh, and actually, you, you realise that things have moved either around you in terms of competition um, or in terms of um, your own sort of, um, uh, sort of personal goals may have changed. Or just, just constantly stand back and reassess is this the right direction that we're going in? And then there's lots of things along the way that will present themselves uh, opportunities, threats. Um, that may mean you go in different directions and just always stand back and make sure that's the right thing and that's actually what you wanted to do. So the first thing, not to cover up too much that I'm just going to talk about in terms of funding, um, the highs and lows of funding and fundraising and, um, and going through that process. So we've raised um, a couple of hundred grand since we started. Um, I've got experience in raising money for, for clients in the past, um, biotech companies we have raised sort of two, three million. Um, it's very different raising for a healthcare biotech business from a, 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 a tech a tech business. But the fundamentals are the same in terms of getting a, getting all of the information together, getting a data room, making sure that all of the information is um, is is there, and you're open and honest with with investors, um, and, and you understand the risk profile of the business. Um, the highs and lows. The highs obviously is when an investor says, "Yeah, great, we love it, we're going to invest." The low is, that's on a Friday, the low is on the Monday when something's happened. Um, uh, I've had one uh, chat where he just thought about it over the weekend and decided something else came in from another one of his investment portfolio on that Friday night. He decided he was going to put 50k in team. It's great. We, had, we celebrated too early, went out for curry on a Friday night and um, regretted it on Monday. Um, <laughs> so uh, you get highs and lows, you get lots of interest. You also have to try and weigh up the people assessing the, pro the, the project. And are they, are they actually, are they genuine? You've got to treat everybody as if they are genuine investors, but sometimes you just feel that they might just be mining you for information. Um, I've certainly felt that a few times, I've been a bit more guarded um, uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of releasing information. Um, and, and it's better to do, I've all, we've also had investors who actually have not wanted them to invest, so we've turned them away. Um, which is a bit crazy, but um, uh, putting in sort of ridiculous conditions now um, that could hamper us going forward. So it could actually be, you know, stand back, reassess. Yes, I want the cash, but do I want that to increase the risk um, uh, and, and, and the implications that would have this particular thing to other shareholders? No, I didn't, so I walked away from it. 
And that was potentially 115 grand of funding. Um, hey. um, partnering opportunities, again, we've, you get opportunities. We've, we've had opportunities presented to us where we can integrate our software with uh, other, other platforms and other, people, other, other people's software. Um, and uh, some, some are good, some are fantastic. Um, and we're we'll exploring some at the moment. Um, some again, you just feel that they may just be sort of lifting you for information and, and, and just sort of just hold back some of the technical aspects to, to that. Um, so, whilst um, I'm not technical, clearly, an accountant, but our CTO um, uh, will, will, will be on those calls. He's always made aware not to actually give away too much information and you know, keep things. You, know, you put NDAs in place, non disclosure agreements, but we haven't got the funds to challenge if somebody does breach that NDA, so it's almost not worth the papers written on. Well, I'm sure the lawyer will disagree. Um, <laughs> that's my personal view. Um, staffing and recruitment. Uh, it's a great feeling to recruit the team, uh, get the team all working in the same goal. Uh, we, we've got a, a strong team, um, all, all, all going for that same, striving for that same goal. We had one member of staff who decided to want to relocate to London. Um, he was one of the original members of the team, which was disappointing, but he was upfront about it. It gave us about nine months' notice. Uh, at the time, it did feel you know, he, he was an intern, he'd come through the, the uh, UEA. We'd given him the opportunity. We've, he's now got a great job in London. That's great. We'd helped him achieve that, which is fantastic, which is the whole point of the internship programme. I was gutted to see him leave um, because he was doing some really good work. But, um, you, again, you can't be too emotional attached to it because it's business, and actually, the business impact that he had leaving we then recruited somebody else who's got different strengths different competencies and actually i think this is stronger uh, now going forward he had his place at that, that time um, so the highs and lows we have to deal with staff absence and things like that one of my members of the team has been um, uh, severely ill with cancer the last three or four months but he's, he's back now but that's that's put quite a strain on us for um, for, for that but uh, He's, uh, he's, he's back now, but um, uh, in terms of um, in terms of product development, um, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> you, you're constantly. You know, I, I was out all day today. I came to the office and how things going. It's great, a fantastic day. But you know, until well, I had to phone early, but until you know, I, I know how they how they're doing. But constantly, <laughs> we're, we're developing new things, new add-ons to that to that product. Um, and, and the very nature of technology is that it sometimes goes well, and sometimes goes bad, and then sometimes it's catastrophically not good. Um, and you have to adapt, stand back, reassess, and, and get that um, uh, and get that process. But it is constant highs and lows. And I find that we, um, uh, say we, me and the CTO, we will, we, we, we're very often the opposite. So I may be sort of low, I don't know, fundraising or or a grant application or whatever it might be. But he's on a high because the, the, the tech is working <coughs> fantastically and we've got, or, or vice versa, I've got some really good feedback from some beta customers and stuff and he's worried about how he's going to get the next release out. <laughs> because something, and, and it's only when, to be honest, it's only when we're both at the low point, which doesn't happen very often, that you sort of think, crikey. And again, stand back, kind of reassess and actually then pick out the good things that, that are occurring. So it is an emotional roller coaster. What do you mean is it's a special kind of nightmare yeah. software development? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the objects of the So a yeah, competition, um, we are constantly looking. There's, there's nobody else doing what we're doing, um, and that is still the case today, which is great. Uh, all of the uh, business intelligence and business analytics um, providers are uh, focused on the larger end of the market. Um, there are, I say there's nobody doing exactly what we're doing. Um, there, there are some larger software companies that are doing products for uh, 15, 16,000 pound a year to the SME market. Um, ours works out on the sort of middle, um, most popular package at 1,800 pounds a year. So there's nobody entering at that, uh, at that level. Um, and, and, and similarly, none, none, no, no software is out of the box and, and ready to go and, and has that amount of impact. I think probably the biggest challenge is um, constantly monitoring that competition and, and looking at what is out there. And you, you could spend a good full-time job, <laughs> to be quite honest. I will sit, um, you know, uh, I'll, sad. Uh, like Friday night I'll be sitting there on the phone and I'll just have a quick Google around, you know, what's, 
is there anything else on Sage Analytics, Zero Analytics, you know, what, what's going out of the box analytics? And just 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 constantly looking. Um, we use Slack, I don't know if anyone else uses Slack, but we've got a, uh, um, a competition portal on Slack. So if I see anything of interest, any of us see if anything of interest, we just log in that and then we, uh, and then we pick it up uh, as well as a repository, basically. So you're constantly looking, and, and Sage released something um, a few, uh, what was it? Um, well, it's January, beginning of January, um, uh, a couple months ago, and they'd released some pre information before Christmas, and it looked quite good. Uh, and I was thinking, mm -hmm. this, this uh, as in it looked quite good, uh, which is rare for Sage, um, and, and it would could have been a competitor for us. Um, but actually, um, the, the reality of the, the, the platform came out, and um, uh, I, was, I was quite comfortable that what we're doing isn't uh, going to be threatened by, by them. Um, but it is a race to, to get out to market, which is what we thought where we are now. So, um, sales and business development, I can't emphasize the importance of, of that. Getting feedback from, uh, from customers. Uh, and adapting, uh, Kieran said it, in terms of understanding. It might not be understanding what the, what the customer wants, um, and it might not be necessarily what you believe. You know, I've got some pretty strong beliefs um, uh, as to what I think a small, uh, medium-sized company needs in terms of business analytics. It surprised me that, that the feedback that we've been getting is um, it's surprising. It comes, you know, they're, they're using our software in different ways that I wouldn't necessarily have seen. Um, and they're using it more on the sales side. Uh, to help them sell and understand their customer profile more. Whereas um, uh, we developed a, a, a dashboard for uh, credit control and chasing your debts and things. And actually, um, of probably 20 customers, there's probably two or three that value that highly. Um, so therefore, that should be lower down our priority list. So again, stand back rather than us spend a huge amount of time developing that in further, park that and spend the time developing and strengthening the product where people actually value it and get benefit from it. So we're constantly uh, looking back and, um, and discussing with our customers. Um, so to summarize, um, seek independent assistance would be my, um, my uh, advice. Um, don't ask friends and family. Mm. They always say it looks great. <laughs> um, or terrible. Uh, or terrible, yeah. My brother often says, because he doesn't understand the market. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm going um, <laughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, friends and family either don't understand, they don't, they're not experienced enough to understand the sector that you're working in. The people to ask are the users, the customers. Getting that feedback from people is, is vital. Um, and, and looking at mentoring as well for, for, for you as a CEO or CTO or whoever within the business, somebody independent who you can talk to, um, who understands business and understands the, uh, the challenges, that roller coaster, but it's someone um, you can bounce stuff off. It doesn't have to be a formal mentoring um, uh, process. Business networking, talking to people, sharing um, those, those highs and lows, um, it's important. Um, me and James will, you know, me and him will talk, but also it's useful to see outside of those four walls um, and for the rest of the team. Um, something we've done, which I find um, invaluable, is set up an advisor network. So we've got some independent um, advisors. So we've got somebody with a technical background that we can use to bounce stuff off. Uh, we've got somebody, an ex um, Sage uh, technical developer. Um, he, he wrote Sage 50 um, back to being able to left um, nine, ten years ago. He worked on that for about nine or ten years. So if we've got a technical challenge in the product, we can go to him. We've got commercial um, advisors around us that we can bounce stuff off. So if, if you think your, your leg's being lifted on a, um, somebody having a chat with you on uh, the sort of sales uh, opportunity or business development side, it's just useful to bounce off against somebody independent. Because if you talk to your friends and family, they'll just reiterate what you told them back. Um, so uh, an advisor network around the business look, looks good. It helps with fundraising as well, having that trusted trusted network and those experts around you. Um, board of directors, again, provides that, um, that, that comfort. They don't, you, you, know, you don't need to pay board of directors to start with. If, and, and they're also your, your, your advocates, they're out there selling it as well. So actually, they can be your eyes and ears. They can also be picking up comp competitors. They're also selling uh, and, and going, through, going through that process. So 
to really sum up, a tip that I um, that I use is now ask ask others for help. Um, if you have a meeting and the meeting's not particularly going somewhere, um, you'll know they'll probably know. The meeting will finish. But ask, uh, don't be afraid to ask them who else you should talk to. Um, <coughs> had one meeting where it was quite clear. Um, it was just 18 months ago. It wasn't for them. I said, okay, is there anyone else I could talk to? And they said, yeah, great, you should talk to the corporate finance network that we're part of, because they love this. And they've got 60 firms of clients all over the UK who, 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 uh, who, who you get introduced to. So just opportunities like that, just try and ask. It's a bit, kind of, uh, there's a book that I read that said you have to ask for three. That would put people off, I think, but just ask, seek that help. They want to help, if, you know, people, people like helping. Uh, and ask who else could, could help. Um, and last, I don't know if you can read that or not, but um, the Lean Startup book by um, uh, Eric Reese is fantastic. I recommend that. Um, I audited that, it was, it was brilliant. And that's um, uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of just understanding um, little snippets you can relate to that roller coaster and, and how, uh, 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 how business works. Could I ask you to tweet mm. that those two links to the hot, two hot sauce account? We'll share it. Oh, we'll do. I'll do that. Now. That's yeah. brilliant. Um, yeah, that's me. Excellent. Thank you very much.